Hey guys, Fincher here from We Coach Crypto. Hope you're all doing well. I've got a very special video for you today where I'm going to be talking to you all about the metaverse. And I'm also going to be talking to you about some of the projects that are out there that, in my opinion, have got the potential to do extremely well in the future. So, first things first, remember, guys, we are on a mission to help 1 million people understand cryptocurrency so if we've helped you in any way make sure you let us know and for those of you that are trying to learn more about this check out our website we coach crypto check out our website we coach crypto.com there is a free 35 page guide on there on how to invest in cryptocurrency go and take advantage of it it can help you out it's a great starting point so First things first, what is the metaverse? So if any of you have watched the movie Ready Player One, you will probably have a very good idea of what the metaverse could look like. Now, why is the metaverse so important as part of the progression of technology and within social media for all of us as human beings moving forward? So imagine, we're, I'm going to take you back, way back now, to a point where we were literally communicating via email and fax, and that kind of moved on a little bit, and we were able to send text messages. And then imagery came along, so we were sending images. And then video came along, and now, at the moment, that's what we use. It's video in order to condense and consume content and it's what we share with one another too you know we have video calls we consume all the content as video on platforms like facebook and instagram and linkedin and twitter and this is something that we're just used to it's normal for all of us now it's how we communicate uh, obviously, the pandemic with COVID-19 had a massive part to play, and people started using Zoom a lot more. People have started using Loom, which is another video one. And it, it's slowly taking its time to progress, but we're at a point now where we have something called the metaverse, and it's being done already. There are businesses and there are huge developers there are businesses out there that are doubling down on this metaverse. And what does that look like? Okay. Imagine that you put on a VR headset. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced it before, but this is a new way to be able to play games um, and deal with augmented reality. And you've got to realize that this isn't just a fun entertainment aspect. This is being used in hospitals by surgeons using augmented reality for training for um, all sorts of things that you can imagine. It can be used across any industry, any, okay? And I challenge you to tell me an industry that it can't be used in because it can, right? So imagine being able to communicate with somebody that you've actually got your own avatar, your own character. So obviously, if you've ever played games before, you'll know that you hold a controller as a console. You're sat in your you know, front room, for example, the TV's on, and you're playing a game. And while playing that game, you then will communicate with other people using a headset so that it's more immersive. And, you know, there's that feeling of, oh, this person is also playing this game too. We're all playing it together. I can communicate with them and we can try and win the game together. Imagine that you become the player. So you put on this headset and you are the player. So when you move your hands, hands in front of you are moving, okay? When you turn around, the room is like you're seeing the room move, okay? And they have these special track pads, which I've actually used myself at some of the shows that are out there, where you can walk on this. You can move left, you can move right, you can sprint, but you stay exactly on the spot. So in 
in reality, in the real world, you're still in your front room. You're just stood on this special track pad that can move in any direction. You're wearing this headset and you become the player. Now, that is amazing by itself. But imagine going a step further to actually be able to interact with other people and meet anywhere in the world, places that you know, you'd love to go in real life, but can't. So you could, to an extent, do pretty much anything in your normal life inside the metaverse. So you could have an appointment with your doctor, but you and your doctor could be meeting at Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas in the metaverse. So the possibilities with this are mind-blowing. They're endless. And from an investment standpoint, there are projects that are out there that are creating some absolutely amazing games. They're creating areas that people can use NFTs and experience them inside the metaverse. And you've got to look at Facebook, okay? I know they're not the most liked corporation in the world, but they are a mega corporation. They have a hell of a lot of money. They have got an unbelievable reach to billions of people okay and they have rebranded then they're no longer called facebook they've rebranded to meta that is a huge sign of what's going to come they have already confirmed that they're going to be setting up retail outlets all over the world that people can go into their local town city go inside and try out their new gaming console so you put on the headset, you have two little handles, and you can experience what it is to be inside the metaverse. And this is going to blow people away. It's going to blow kids away. Every child on the planet that goes into these shops is going to want one of these consoles because they've never experienced anything like it. This is the advancement that we're talking about. When I was a child, it blew my head away when I was playing on a Game Boy with Tetris. It was amazing. I felt like I was inside that game, moving these little blocks around, getting them to come down. And it, it's, it's just amazing, the advancement that we've seen. But this is going to revolutionize the world. And in the crypto space in particular, as a result of some of this news, and, and by the way, just to give you another fairly big uh, company that's out there that's also working on this, Microsoft. They produce the Xbox consoles, the Xbox X. Uh, they've got one of the most, if not the most popular console on the planet. And they know what they're doing when it comes to the entertainment industry. They're also working on their consoles, their version of the metaverse. So this isn't going anywhere. This is going to be the future of entertainment. It's going to be the future of NFTs, uh, tokenization in everything that you can imagine, being in a new immersive environment. There are movies that are out there. All you've got to do is watch them and think this is going to become a reality. You've got Total Recall. You've got Ready Player One. There, there's so many of them, okay, that have been sci-fi movies that you can think of where it's like, wow, they were doing all touch screen and all that kind of thing years ago in these movies. Then you look at Apple and they created the iPhone and you, it was a touch screen and you could zoom in on images and zoom out. It, it's like, this is the next step. This is evolution of entertainment and how we all interact socially as human beings in a digital sense. Mind-blowing stuff is coming, guys. So what a lot of people have been asking me in my inner circle is which metaverse tokens and which companies that are out there have I got my eye on and why? And the other huge question that was asked, which I'm going to answer for all of you, okay, is how do we actually identify that, yeah, that looks like a good project versus one that's not looking so good and I wouldn't invest in it. So I'm going to get into it now because it's been a long intro and I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you guys what I have got my eye on. Okay, so first up, welcome to the open metaverse, the sandbox. Okay, play 
create, own, and govern a virtual metaverse made by players. Now, I'm just going to show you the market first and foremost. All right. So these are NFTs that are for sale. If you don't know what an NFT is, it's a non-fungible token. Why is that important? Because anyone can reproduce something in a digital sense. I can take a photograph, then I can post that photograph on social media. Someone can keep their finger on it and save it and crop it and do whatever they want with it. Who's the true owner of that image? That's what NFTs are doing. Okay, non-fungible tokens means that there is true ownership shown on the blockchain for an individual or series of individual images, GIFs, clips, videos, etc. This is revolutionizing the art industry, the music industry, the film industry, the sport industry, and, and it's just going absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. So the biggest companies in the art industry are involved in the NFT space. Some of the biggest celebrities on the planet are involved in the NFT space. And there's a huge amount of money that people are making flipping NFTs too, if you know what to look for, if you know what NFT artists to be uh, checking out. So one thing that I want to bring to your attention here is Atari. If you are over the age of 25, you have probably heard of Atari. Atari are a huge gaming company. They produced a number of consoles and they are one of the huge, huge corporations that are in this space and they are double, double down in, uh, they're doubling down even on uh, how they can capitalize by being a part of the metaverse. And what they've actually done is built a casino in the metaverse, all right? And I know this is all mind-blowing stuff, guys, but what you've got to understand is imagine an exact replica of the Earth that you can put this headset on and go into, but the possibilities that you have, it's not just going in there and walking around and seeing an exact rep replica of the Earth. Imagine having the ability to purchase land, build upon that land, decorate the inside of the building that you have built and display NFTs that people can purchase and you're whatever character you want to be, okay? So if I chose to be, I could be a 65-year-old white male that's got blonde hair that's in the metaverse and that's who my character is. Just the same as if you went on a computer and chose and created a character that character that's on the screen that you're watching when you're playing your game, imagine you've got the headset on and you're perceived as that individual inside of the metaverse. And other people that are in the metaverse would see you as that avatar, as that character. So you can actually be whoever you want to be and you can buy certain parts on the sandbox that are available here that are NFTs and you've got the Atari NFT collections here, okay? So you can see, these are sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, because this is going to be huge, and people are going off and investing, and people are also going off just to play, just to check it out, just to get a feel for what's actually happening here. But you've got a huge opportunity here ahead of you guys. This is not financial advice. We always share this information purely for educational service, uh, educational purposes, but you've got to understand that this is the way the world is going. This is unstoppable. It will be what people do to interact with one another in a social sense. The way that we are used to communicating playing games, etc. It's been constantly evolving. This is the next step, and it's going to be a huge one like you've never seen before. So getting involved in projects like this during a time where hype is huge, and you're probably going to see a few years where this continues to grow and more and more amazing things start happening. The sandbox for me is definitely one that you guys should be checking out. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is just a little bit about the actual project itself. 
So first things first, let's look at the partners. They've got Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is a very famous American black rapper, okay? A lot of followers this guy has. The Walking Dead, pretty big series that was on TV, extremely popular. South China Morning Post, Avenge Sevenfold, The Smurfs, Howl's Kitchen, Care Bears, Blast from the Past, Atari, Dead Mouse, Animonica Brands, Galaxy Interactive, Alpaca, Blue Pool Capital, Liberty City Ventures, Kingsway Capital, Samsung Next, Graticule, LG, the people that make the TVs, Technology Ventures, Sound, SCB, Polygon Studios, Steakfish, Sterling VC. You know, the, these guys are huge to have as partners. Now, meet the team. Arthur Madrid, CEO, Sebastian Borge, COO, Marcelo Santurio, CFO, Lucas Shrewsbury, CTO, head of design, Damien Valentino, Thibault Sima, head of art, Marcus Blash, head of marketing, Pablo Iglesias, lead Vox Edit developer, Julio Ibargoran, lead web developer. Hopefully I'm saying these names right. Don't quote me on this. Alejandro Andes, lead game developer, Louis Ambrose Van Hulbush, lead game designer, Ronan Sandford, lead blockchain architect, Jean Etienne Martin, game project manager. What I'm going to do is skip the rest of the names. What I'm trying to show you guys is that this is not a tiny project. They have got a big old team, okay? And I've done my research into the CEO, into the COO, into the CFO, and into the CTO. These are the important people that have got a level of control in this project, okay? And then everything that's underneath it is obviously people that head up different departments. But they're bona fide, bona fide people. I've checked them out on LinkedIn. I've looked at some of the previous work that they've been involved in. It's been successful. So I've got no worries from a team perspective. I've got no worries from a hype perspective. I've got no worries about the game itself. And for huge partners that they've got out there to have partnered with them, it means that they've done their due diligence also. So they've got a very, very big community. So you can join their community by clicking here on the socials. They've got their own Discord. They're on Telegram. They have a lot of articles on Medium. I've checked a number of these out. They've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They're on YouTube and they're on Twitch, okay? Also, the white paper. I'm going to show you guys this. So... The Sandbox team is building a unique virtual world where players can build, own, and monetize their gaming experiences using Sand. Sand is the native token that you can purchase on a number of exchanges in order to play this game and also earn rewards and use the token as the main utility for the platform. So, SAM holders will also be able to participate in governance of the platform via a decentralized autonomous organization, a DAO, okay? Where they can exercise voting rights on key decisions of the Sandbox ecosystem. Right, first things first, that is extremely important. Why? The reason that it's important is it means that the people that are playing it and the people that are part of the community and the investors that are buying shares, so to speak, of this project by buying and custodying and owning SAND, the native token, they actually get to have a say what happens with this project. It's not just one guy that controls everything. It's the community, which is important. Okay? And that's what people want to see moving forward. They don't want there to be hierarchy. One super rich guy, everyone else doesn't get a say. So that's an extremely important part. Next, as a player, you can create digital assets, non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Yeah, Upload them to the marketplace. So again, 
mind blowing. You can create NFTs that you can then upload into the metaverse, okay, for the sandbox, which means that you can go off and create your own NFT, mint your NFT, get your NFT, upload it, which means that you're going into the metaverse with that non fungible token, that NFT, and then everyone can see it. And you can even sell these things. Amazing, right? And drag and drop them to create game experiences with the Sandbox Game Maker. The Sandbox has secured over 50 partnerships, including Atari, CryptoKitties, and Sean the Sheep, to build a fun, creative, play-to-earn gaming platform owned and made by players. The Sandbox aims to bring blockchain into mainstream gaming, attracting both crypto and non-crypto game enthusiasts by offering the advantages of true ownership, digital scarcity, monetization capabilities, and interoperability. Now, this is a disclaimer. I'm not going to go through that with you guys. I'm going to come on to the next part, which I wanted to share with you. And you guys should definitely check this out as well. Okay. The Sandbox is a virtual world where players can build own. Sorry, that is exactly the same part. Okay. So. What you'll notice if you're looking at that image there is it's got that kind of Minecraft feel to it. And if you know anything about Minecraft, to this day, that is one of the most successful games ever created, all right? And they've got a similar kind of thing going on, but then massively improved upon it because you are able to upload NFTs and bring your avatar to life inside of this sandbox metaverse experience and i can't tell you how important that is in the gaming industry but then for all of us as a whole to not have a central point of authority that says you're allowed to be that character that character or that character and you can choose these clothing items and you pay for those clothing items and everyone in the world can also have the same clothing items the same um character what I loved about games moving forward was that you could create your own character so that there's a personal element to it. So you can choose how you look there. But obviously for clothing, skins they're called. And for um, you can also have skins on weapons and tools and all that kind of stuff when you're playing these games. To have NFTs where there's true ownership, like I create an NFT, I create some clothing, my avatar wears that clothing, no one else can wear it. Nobody, because I created it. I'm the only person. That is huge, absolutely huge. And what it also does is it means you've now got beauty in the eye of the beholder. So if someone was to approach me as my avatar in this game and say, hey, I really love your outfit, can I buy it off of you? You can say, yes, this is how much I'll take for it. And if that person chooses to do that, you can then put it up for sale, they can purchase it, they pay you in sand or in Ethereum, it could be outside of the game and then you can swap it over to them using something like OpenSea. There's so many opportunities that come off the back of this, guys. What you guys need to think about is if you want to dive down the rabbit hole and find out more about all the ins and outs and technical inner workings of these games, of the metaverse, of the opportunities that are coming, that's great. If you're just looking at this, I just want to know how to make money, this is a good opportunity. Sandbox will continue to grow in value, in my opinion. So this is just one of many that are out there that I've got my eye on. Other ones to mention, which I'm not going to go into because this video will be about two hours otherwise, but you've got Decentraland. Mana is the ticker. Mike, Alpha, November, Alpha. Okay, obviously the Sandbox. The ticker is Sand, Sierra, Alpha, November, Delta. But moving forward, there are some other ones that I feel are really cool that you guys should check out. There's SLP, Smooth Love Potion. There is also UFO, UFO Gaming. 
and there are many others. There are up and coming ones. And th this for me is where the hype is in the crypto market right now. So we've seen the minute Facebook came out with that information that they were changing and rebranding to Meta and what their sort of um, new vision is in this world. Absolutely mind blowing. We saw a load of these metaverse tokens and gaming tokens as well. You can't be forgetting about the likes of Axie Infinity, AXS is the ticker, Alpha X Ray, Sierra. And you can't forget about Alluvium too. For me, that's going to be huge. And the ticker for that one is ILV, that is India Lima Victor. I'm really excited about this, guys. Extremely, extremely excited. I think that. It's a huge opportunity for people, huge, just by having some exposure in the gaming and metaverse and NFT marketplace. Okay, so guys, let's look at 1.1, a user-generated content ecosystem. So the Sandbox Gaming ecosystem consists of three integrated products that together provide a comprehensive experience for user-generated content, UGC, content production. So, Vox Edits, this simple to use yet powerful free 3D voxel modeling package allows users to create and animate 3D objects such as people, animals, foliage, and tools, and export them into the sandbox marketplace to become game assets. B, Marketplace. The sandbox's web-based marketplace allows users to upload publish and sell their creations, assets, made in VoxEdit as tokens, both ERC721 and ERC1155 tokens. C, Game Maker. Anyone who owns assets, either by making them in VoxEdit or purchasing them, can utilize them with the third and most important ecosystem product, the Game Maker and the game itself. This product, when launched in game maker mode, enables users to place and use their assets within a piece of land, an ERC721 token, that they can own in the virtual world. Users can decorate their land with assets and more importantly, implement interesting and nuanced gameplay mechanics by assigning predefined behaviors to the assets through visual scripting nodes, turning a land from the decoration experience into a potential full game experience. That is mind-blowing. Amazing. 1.2, blockchain gaming with NFTs. The Sandbox virtual world uses blockchain technology and the NFTs to empower the players and creators. NFTs are an emerging segment in the global game market virtual tokens for digital scarcity, security, and authenticity. Each NFT is distinct or unique. It is indivisible, and it is, and it is not interchangeable for another. What I was saying earlier, guys, okay? So, to give you an idea here of fungible and non-fungible. Fungible, one US dollar. Non-fungible, John Lennon limited edition postage stamps. Okay, because there's only so many of them to go around. The US dollar, continue printing it, printing it, printing it, printing it. So there's no fixed supply. It's everlasting. You can print as much of it as you want, as we see regularly from Mr. Biden and all of his predecessors. Interchangeable, non-interchangeable. Uniform, all of the same. Distinct or unique. Divisible indivisible so these are the pros and cons of nfts versus something that's fungible so through the use of nfts the sandbox users will be able to benefit from a true digital ownership gamers are the true and perpetual owners of their digital items even if the game was shut down or abandoned with blockchain, every game item can be tokenized, allowing gamers to decide how they want to trade, sell, or gift their items. Amazing. So what it means is whatever you create 
whatever you have as an NFT, whatever item it is, it could be a piece of foliage, it could be an item of clothing, it could be a weapon, whatever. Okay, if that game ceased to exist, you can still take those NFTs and go and sell them or take them into another game, which is mind blowing to me. Okay, now security and immutability. Sorry. Okay, digital game items can be easily tokenized and traded in primary and secondary markets that are managed and facilitated by blockchain technology. Items based on scarcity and demand usually invite fraud and theft, but these risks are minimized on blockchain because it is a distributed ledger, which is why, from a crypto sense, guys, we have been constantly harping on about how this is the future of finance because the blockchain technology, the distributed ledger, it's proof, okay? There's no fooling the blockchain. Trading. Blockchain-based gaming platforms can provide users with ultimate control over their digital assets. They can buy and sell items freely without concern that they will be ripped off or that a platform will close and cancel all the value of their in-game items. Again, more protection. Cross-application interoperability. Blockchain provides capacity for games to utilize shared assets. Assets, avatars, lands, and any other game elements can be used in other games that allow it. These game items are no longer confined by a narrow digital ecosystem huge guys absolutely huge seriously okay the sandbox metaverse uses several tokens to create a circular economy between all the profiles of users who will interact with its platform namely the players creators curators and land owners these are the lands assets and sand a token based on the ERC20 protocol, which will act as the official currency in the ecosystem when purchasing goods and services within the game marketplace, amongst other rights. So what is SAND and what is it used for? SAND is an essential part of the Sandbox platform, and the Sandbox are working on establishing key mechanics that makes it intrinsically tied to the Sandbox platform and its value. Sand is an ERC20 utility token built on the Ethereum blockchain that serves as the basis for transactions within the Sandbox and has the following uses. So you can use Sand to access the Sandbox platform. Players spend Sand in order to play games, buy equipment or customize their avatar character and can potentially collect Sand through gameplay. Creators spend sand to acquire assets, lands, and through staking. So you can even stake your sand to get you more sand. And there are rewards that you can get in sand. So, I mean, it's just crazy. So land sales drive demand for sand to purchase lands. Artists spend sand to upload assets to the marketplace and buy gems for defining rarity and scarcity. Governance. Sand is a governance token that allows holders to participate in governance decisions on the platform using a DAO structure. They can exercise voting rights on key elements such as foundation grant attribution to content and game creators and feature prioritization on the platform roadmap. Sand owners can vote themselves or delegate voting rights to other players of their choice. Staking, sand allows for staking, which allows for passive revenues on lands. You get more sand by staking it. This is also the only way to get valuable gems and catalysts needed for asset creation. So they're rewarding people that are staking sand by giving them these gems and catalysts, which you need in order to create assets. So it's a very clever structure that they've set up. Fee capture model. 5% of all transactional volume carried out in SAND tokens, which are the transaction fees, shall be allocated with 50% to the staking pool as rewards for token holders that stake SAND tokens and 50% to the foundation. So what they're doing 
is anyone that's transacting in SAND, they're taking 5% of the transaction volume, splitting it into two, giving half of it as rewards to other people that are playing, staking, doing what they're doing, creating assets. The other 50%, they're putting into the foundation to help grow Sandbox and make it better and implement the other things that they're doing along their roadmap. Very smart way of doing it. Foundation. The role of the foundation is to support the ecosystem of the Sandbox, offering grants to incentivize high quality content and game production on the platform. To date, the foundation has funded over 15 game projects and granted 100 artists to produce NFTs ahead of the public launch in December 2020. The overall valuation of the metaverse grows through the valuation of all games funded by the foundation, creating a virtuous circle to enable funding bigger games. So this thing's been exploding in value. I believe that it's going to continue to do that and it's going to be a big player later down the line. But what are they actually planning to do next from here? So they have a strong product roadmap ahead and a top team to execute a strong vision to build a unique virtual world gaming platform where players can build, own and monetize their gaming experiences and spread the power of blockchain as the lead technology in the gaming industry. All these together with what they have achieved so far, resulting in TSB being awarded a recognition as the most expected blockchain game in 2020. And there is a link to that story there. Okay. In the short term, we're launching the fourth land pre-sale and game maker. This will be complemented with the Sand public launch. As such, we expect to have Sand available for individuals and corporations in order to increase liquidity and availability of it with the main purpose to collaborate with the community growth and ecosystem flow. In relation to the proposed SAND offering, the community of creators and players will need to get access to SAND. We plan to make it accessible to the community through multiple ways with controllable supply mechanisms such as purchasing sand from multiple exchanges. As the community increases in terms of the number of creators, players and assets exchanged in the marketplace, there might be an increased need for sand within the ecosystem. Therefore, while the total supply of sand is fixed, this is big news, the initial amount of sand offered will provide a scarcity effect, reducing the sand available per capita and therefore fostering demand, which is exactly what is happening with the big news that has happened with Metaverse, with Facebook, with Microsoft, with NFTs, with gaming, with blockchain gaming, with all of this, yeah, it's created more demand. The scarcity and the fact that the fact that sand has a fixed supply means that the likelihood is that the more people that are interested in it start buying it, the price is naturally going to rise because there's going to become less and less sand available for people to purchase. So as long as the market is continuing to go in an upwards trajectory, you're going to find that a portion of the money that comes into the marketplace is going to start coming into projects like this. So there's so much more that you guys can read. There are 44 pages here. I know that I have done a long video here and I do want to share some of the other Metaverse projects with you, which I will do in a future video. But I also just wanted to share with you guys, obviously, the uh, performance of it so far. So I'm going to check that out on CoinMarketCap for you. Okay, so guys, you can see here, Sand is up 23.91% in the last 24 hours. It's currently $4.17 per token, okay? And it's rank number 49. Now, you've got to bear in mind, guys, there's 14,439 cryptos that are on coin market cap and this is in the top 50 that's impressive and it also means that it's probably here to stay it's not going anywhere so let's have a look at some of the tokenomics here 
the max supply is three billion. Okay, total supply is three billion. And the volume that has come through this project in the last 24 hours is four billion, 212 million. Okay, sorry, that's just gone up. Four billion, 206 million, 268,444 dollars. So the volume on it is actually down 11.5%, but still, that is a lot of money coming through this project and being used, all right? The circulating supply, okay, that means what's actually out there available. There's 30% of it, right? So 892,246,119 sand are available. To give you an idea of the difference of scarcity, right, Bitcoin has 21 million coins that are ever going to be available in existence. Sand has 892 million at the moment. So it's a lot more, but you've still got to understand from a, a game perspective, the people that are in there that are buying this, using it, using it for, you know, the assets, some people are holding it because they know it's likely to appreciate in value. It's not actually that much. So from a scarcity perspective, it's actually pretty good as a project. The market cap on this thing is a beast. It's up 21%. It's at 3 billion. 658 million 101 that is sorry again change this thing's flying 3 billion 658 million 836,328 dollars so the market capitalization is how much dollar value this entire project has currently now let's look at some of the performance. As you can see for the day, this thing is just continuing to rise. It's now a tiny bit of steam. In the last seven days, I mean, that is just unbelievable. In the last month, I mean, look at this. It was down at like 70 cents, roughly. It's now at $4.08, eight, and I do believe it's going a lot higher. So guys, there's some information for you all about the sandbox one of my favorite metaverse projects that is out there i do believe that this is now a low risk opportunity to get involved in obviously everything is market dependent so remember guys please stay diligent understand what's happening in the market this is a great opportunity without a doubt okay for me I making sure that I have exposure to a number of these projects because there is so much growth in them and will continue to be in them. So if any of you are interested in learning more about the type of projects that are out there that you can get involved in and take advantage of, please get in contact with us. Hope you all have a fantastic day and I'll catch up with you in the next video. Take care.